nature. Well, I think part of yeah. it, is, it isn't just the work, but we try to make everybody happy. Yeah. And we know what happens when you try yeah. to make everybody yeah. happy. Yeah. Make nobody happy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then the divisions begin. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then uh, across all people is the struggle to back down and admit wrongdoing or or meeting someone in the middle so to speak and not having to have things your way to your earlier point about having control uh yeah well and then we we'll say well let me be the devil's advocate we actually invite the devil into our room to help us make decisions and it's like whoa <laughs> where does that come from uh right <laughs> Yep. I hated that when I worked. I just hated it. Oh. Any other thoughts here? I, there's costs, but it's worth it. Right, yeah, there are costs, but uh, uh, the costs really lie, we know, with, with our uh, sinful and fallen nature, and we know the heart of God, so that is worth it. And, and Christ came and laid down his life so that all people of every nation, language, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, could come to life in him, and he didn't spare his own life for that. So there is a cost, as Jesus demonstrated. Our cost might not be our lives, but there is a cost, and it is worth it. Yeah, I think that was a really uh, great wrap-up to that whole discussion. The head then C and then B. Right? Yeah, that kind of... That, it's a wrong uh, order for those questions. Right. That is, uh, I think that's right. Uh, yeah, so we should end, instead of with cost, saying this is all worth it because we know the mind and the heart of God. Uh, 15a, in your own words, characterize those of whom the Christians at Rome were to be on their guard. Troublemakers. <laughs> the non believers. Yeah, non believers. That are trying to make trouble. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you, you, that's where you're, you're reaching for the non believers so that they can become believers. But then you got those non believers who just create strife. And... So, you know, uh, what do we call those people today on the internet? Influence? Trolls. Oh. Trolls. Oh. I don't know if you've heard that term, but a yeah. troll is someone who comments on the internet specifically for the purpose of Stir riling people up. up. Yeah. Um, I, I think you just do have people who truly like to see that. <laughs> and then there are I mean, trolls that are not people. Yeah. 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 True. The bots yep. that have been programmed by a person and then left to create discontent. Right. So confusion, uh, all those things, it really comes back to those things, it is, is to uh, confuse and disorient. Mm -hmm. And uh, those people existed at Paul's time just like they do uh, today. People make themselves a stumbling block. Uh, people who are, uh, in a Christian theology term, schismatics, just people who constantly cause division. Um, Ultimately, people serving for their own agenda rather than Christ. Uh, and it's really kind of sad, but sometimes people's agendas is literally to thrust everybody into confusion. Oh, yay, that's fun to do, I guess. Kind of sad, but... It might not even be, right, this love of money. It might not be a money grab or a power grab. It might literally just be the satisfaction of throwing people into confusion. It's bizarre, but it exists. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, why are such people so dangerous for the church? Inter uh, one of those where did you have to ask why? But what's that? They're deceivers and they can De quickly destroy it. Church. Right. We saw that happen. Especially those weaker in faith. Especially mm -hmm. the yeah those weaker in faith. Pat, you had some, did you I have? I said they sowed dissension. Yeah, so dissension, right? Uh, and and 
like we say in our minds, it's easy to see why we should avoid those people, but the, the fact of the matter is, is sometimes those people are subtle and crafty, and so you got to watch out. Uh, that's just the fact. Let me see if the author had anything else on 15B. No, just block people from receiving the truth. Mm -hmm. Actually, seeing people leave the church because of the silly hymnal changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big one. Huge. Yeah. I mean, oh, no, 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 days and days of arguing whether we should go to the new one or the old one. And now there are two beyond that one that they fought about. And it's like, uh, there have been. Did, they left the church and went somewhere where they liked the Bible or the hymnal better. <laughs> There have been true stories of churches that have split over carpet versus tile. Uh, churches that have split and have had conflict because some people apparently thought that the candles in the chancel had to be 100% beeswax and couldn't be like another uh, synthetic or paraffin or whatever. Another, like there have been splits over the material of candles and things like that. Uh, so anyone who's been working on the new building will know that that is a heck of a slog to uh, keep it all together. Yeah, you know, you think you have it right, and the inspector comes and says, no, you have to do it different. And it's, it's just a little thing. You know, Details. Half an inch. Not my big doors. Yeah. Well, that's a big one. No, the magnetic doors is big. Oh, okay. But half an inch on a sink height. And just because the sink. mental fortitude you, Tom, <laughs> Pastor, and the people working on that building have to have. Yeah, is he no, looking no, for no, a no, handout under the table complaint. or something? Because that's what oh, a lot of. Yeah. 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 You know, those prayers for all for. of us is. I went the other way for. Work our way reach my fall. Yeah. That's when yeah. I decided to retire. Yep. Yeah. When people started saying, well, that's going to be Carol's building, and it's like, no, that's enough, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... Uh, and I hope that doesn't happen to some of these members on this committee. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's going to take... Him. Oh, no, yeah. people have been mean. There have been mean people out there. Well, this, and I pray that doesn't there's happen been a few Well, I understand that because that. I'm on the committee and I really haven't well, felt I've been treated. Maybe mean. they're directing it at the people who are the weakest. Well, or directing the ones that are at the center of focus oh, and not the whole be. committee. Because the committee was pretty unified throughout this entire process. <laughs> yeah. Well, somebody's getting that, I think. Oh, oh I don't doubt that. Yeah, there's a, it, it's it's unfortunately almost inevitable that that will happen, especially when uh, you get you get a tr probably over 150 people, which is like really a network of people you can really know 150 people, uh, and then beyond that. So when you get just a, a larger group of people, that is almost inevitable, and the uh, the work that has to be done to strive together. Right. Uh, as Paul said, yeah, strive together. Our response to them is going to be, well, you know what? We got phase two that we'd like to start here pretty quick. Why don't you volunteer to be on the plane for that one? Yeah. Yeah, there's... Uh, so the uh, the elders, and I think the council, too, as well, read through um, Ted Kober's book. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, yeah. Called? Built on the Rock. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Built on the Rock. Conflict. Uh, resolution in the church. Uh, one of the biggest things in addressing that is being in Bible study, knowing the Word of God so that uh, you have a firm foundation and you can have difficult conversations and moments and not uh, lose your way, I guess, to get lost in things that don't matter. And there are obviously things that matter when coming to these things, but they're, the way you go about that conversation can be can be difficult and yet productive and uh, respectful, I would say. Uh, yeah, we I have know. a hard time doing that. I know someone who actually left, not left the church to go to another one, left church completely because 
one small group in the church removed the pastor. Mm. There was one area he didn't have strength. Instead of removing him, give him support in that strength. Mm -hmm. Let someone else do that work. Right. Everybody doesn't get everything. Yeah. Right. And this person, it's, he's been out of the church for probably 20 years and will not come mm. back. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't think about that seriously. That is serious. How deeply those things get people. Uh, so C, kind of continuing the discussion, uh, what seems to drive such people? Self-righteousness. Yeah. Satan. So, yeah. Arrogance. Yes. <laughs> Arrogance, pride, ego, those uh, those characteristics sin. that I would say, like pride is a sin, but pride and ego and self-righteousness really is at the root of most sinful behavior. So, which really, yeah, does go back to Satan and human weakness. Uh, D, how specifically do they operate? Sneakily. <laughs> Sneakily. <laughs> Flat, flattery. Smooth talking. Flattery. Yep. They take over the conversation. Take, okay, take over the conversation. Uh, I think back to Nancy's earlier point about like a charismatic uh, leader, which, not a fault to be a charismatic leader, but, like, those are more obvious examples for us when those people are the ones uh, causing uh, division and all of those things. So, manipulation, subtlety, uh, flattery. Sometimes it's the money. Yeah. The person who has most money. Right. Yeah, so, so behind the scenes. They can operate behind the scenes and not even be known to uh, the people. I think that's actually kind of uh, interesting. The evil skill of, of keeping your hands clean while directing things and then someone else takes all of the fire and the heat, uh, redirecting that blame and that responsibility elsewhere. In a previous church of ours, the, the pastor was the problem. And, uh, that church has gone from 3,000 members to 1,000 now. And there are lots of members from that church who now attend here. But <laughs> he was the pastor was a fisherman, and I remember often in the sermons he would refer to us as carp. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh. It seems funny now, but it didn't seem so funny oh then. No, <laughs> not <laughs> And he frequently would say, perhaps you'd be happier elsewhere. <laughs> and 2,000 were. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we, we are. <laughs> he was uh, right. <laughs> and we can laugh about it because you're here being fed and nourished uh, by the word instead. Because for some people, uh, that drives them just out completely and away. That's not so funny. Uh, but, my goodness. Yeah, is it? One of the biggest things that we can do as Christians, I think people are worried about being doormats, about being walked all over and things like that. But as a Christian, you literally have everything you need in Christ. You, Christ has one eternal life for you. No one can take that away. And so in matters of reconciliation uh, and conflict, uh, Paul's words think, don't think more highly of yourselves than you ought. Be the first one to seek reconciliation. Uh, as much as is possible with you, be at peace with one another. Even if you're in the right, and the other person is in the wrong, and they're unwilling to apologize. You don't lack anything you need. You have Christ. You don't need, you don't need to be right. You don't need uh, to win. So don't think of yourselves more highly than you ought. Be the one to seek reconciliation as much as it is in your power to do so. Now, of course, there's only so much you can do, but so much of this comes uh, when we dig in our heels and won't move and won't budge and uh, 
and those things. So it's obviously it's important to not let uh, people who are constantly creating division to keep doing that. There's church discipline for that reason. But there's also just the fact of the matter that you as a Christian have everything you need and can humble yourself to be the lowliest servant just as Christ humbled himself as the perfect God to be the lowliest servant and even to die for sinners. So, sorry, that's just a big thing on conflict resolution. It really comes down to are you willing to set pride aside and be wrong or even if you're right to set aside the need to be right and resolve. Uh, those, are, those are big deals and they're hard work uh, and they don't come naturally to our human nature which is why we have Christ as our guide, uh, our savior and everything that we need to act out on what it means to live a sanctified Christian life. Anyway, um, Paul is confident, number 16, that of the Romans' ability to stand fast in the face of deception and false teaching. How can we also stand fast? Remember that even God's people can be deceivers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so we're all learning together as Christians, and the purpose of the church is to be united and to trust each other, but still with the knowledge that Christians are still fallen human beings, and so uh, as Christians, your trust ultimately is in Jesus. And if a Christian fails... That doesn't mean Jesus is untrustworthy, right? That's not Jesus' failing. That's a human failing. Uh, and so, yeah, we obviously love concord and unity in the church, but to just have the realization that people are still people and that ultimately our trust is in Christ. Well, and I was, um, well, first of all, our confirmation was moved up because our pastor was leaving. So rather than having the spring confirmation we had in January, well, then that created a problem. What are we going to do with this group of eighth graders? So this guy said, okay, I'll, I'll provide Bible study with them. Well, then after a while, the dads got together and go, did your kid say this? Did your kid, you know, they started talking because he was changing some stuff that we had just, Learn, and I have to wonder if we hadn't just had it, would we have been able to catch that he was being very sly about this? I mean, mm -hmm. and um, we had to go in front of the elders and we had to repeat what he said because everybody's saying, Are you sure you understood him right? After all, he is this person, and he came up and says, yeah, he says, I've been trying to lead them astray. That was my mission. He admitted it? He admitted it. Oh, but it, it was like, you know, the, we, we couldn't believe he was doing it. Our parents couldn't believe it. They this, this wasn't a pastor. This was no, he, he was a he layman, was in, but he was one of those guys that, you know. To lead you astray. Yeah. Wow. But he was one of these adults that talked to kids rather than talked down to them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he was, he made us feel like we were, we were all doing the right thing, and, <laughs> wow. I heard that story wild, that part of it before. <laughs> <laughs> That's truly wild. Uh, so, for those reasons, uh, we should be like the, oh, I forget the, the community that's talked about in Acts, um, that basically checks everything that Paul says with the Word of God to make sure it lines up. Uh, so we're diligent in our study and knowledge of the Word, especially together, so like, again, Bible studies uh, that we do, growing in the Word, being nourished by the Word, and immersing ourselves in God's truth. Uh, again, I think I mentioned this last week, it's just one of those chapters of the Bible that sticks out with something like this, of John 15, abide in Christ and He will abide in you. Well, always make sure you remember that you have to go to the Word first. Mm -hmm. Are you, you know, compare what was said to the Word. Right. And if I'm not understanding it right, then I need to check something else out in the Word, but you just don't 
take it as well they're they're a good person they wouldn't do that yeah no that's exactly right that's exactly right anything else on this before we move on to day five <laughs> all right uh, 25 to 27 now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. In Rome 17, in Romans 1, 16, Paul had begun the letter to the Romans with a celebration of the gospel. Now he concludes the letter in the same way. Verses 25 to 27, praise the only wise God and provide a rich look at the gospel's place in our lives. Read the verses, then respond to each of the following questions. In verse 25, Paul describes the gospel as his gospel. In what sense can every Christian say the gospel is mine? Christ lived and died for me. Right. The gospel is for you. The gospel is for you. What Christ did on the cross was for you. And the gospel is mine also because uh, we are heirs together with Christ. It's our inheritance. Christ has made us heirs with him. B, what is the proclamation of the gospel about according to verse 25? Jesus Christ. Yep. <laughs> There's the, the Jesus is the answer. Yeah. The gospel is about Jesus. He is both the message and uh, the messenger. substance. Messenger, message, content, substance. Revelation. Revelation, right. <clears throat> right, the very image of God in the flesh. Uh, when was it revealed? When was the gospel revealed? All the way back from the prophets, in the writings of the prophets. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Revealed in the prophets and recorded in the scriptures. So that brings up an important point, you know, the, the Lutheran doctrine of law and gospel, that God speaks to us really in two ways, and that's through his law and through his gospel. And Paul says that the gospel is revealed in the prophets, which defeats the notion, the kind of uh, thinking that boxes up the law and says the Old Testament is law and exclusively law, and that boxes up the New Testament and says the New Testament is all gospel and no law. The law and the gospel are found from the very beginning to the very end. There's law and gospel in the Old Testament. There's law and gospel in the New Testament. Uh, D, for whom has the gospel been revealed? All nations. All nations, every people. Uh, to what end has the gospel been revealed? Obedience, and obedience of faith. The gospel motivates love and obedience. It's uh, uh, the gospel transforms us uh, to live, right, we're not saved by our works, but the gospel, uh, God created us to do good works. He, that's the reason he created us, to do good works and to glorify him. And the gospel, uh, in that way, transforms us. 18, clearly Paul never took for granted the riches of God's wisdom as believed and proclaimed in the gospel, what can lead us sometimes to take this treasure for granted? Sometimes it's, it's, it's easy. We don't have to fight for it. We don't, I, I, in my sphere, people, I don't have to constantly fight for my right to believe. Right. I just can. And so anything that just happens, you know, I don't have to work for, sometimes I take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, I think that's that's <clears throat> pertinent. That's right. I think it is a part of that that we're actually self confident because it's been around for so long. Yeah, it's been around for so and, long, so we're you know, very our parents our grandparents, our parents, us, our kids. So the confidence that we're supposed to have in the gospel is really misdirected. Self. 
to self and yeah, right, and, and subtly so too. Right. I just think that we're really all naive. <laughs> we are. Yeah. Uh, hearing it so often, so we hear we hear the the message of the gospel so often. One, we need to be reminded of it, but we also do hear it so often that we can turn that off in our minds. And I think hearing it so often, and like you said, uh, I'm able to believe it. I don't have to fight for it. It's like, how, how magnificent is the truth of the gospel for a Ukrainian Christian who doesn't know whether or not they're going to walk outside and, and be killed? that imminent danger, we have these kind of, for the most part, right, we have struggles and hardships, we get sick, we have decaying bodies, we have people that we lose that we love, all those things. We have hardships, but we also have mundane routine in our lives, mm -hmm. and like how vivid is the gospel for people who don't know what's going to happen to them at any given moment in time. You have, in other words, we've been given choices, although there are a lot of false choices, on what we can hang on to. And for some people in, in other parts of the world, now it's, the tr it's true for us, but we don't see it this way all the time. But for them, the only thing they have to hang on to is the gospel. Uh, and we have a lot of fluff. So, just all of those things. And I, I think a lot of people can be too blase about it too. You have to, you have to keep up with the Bible study. You have to go to church. You have to, you have to go to Sunday school because I'm reminded of so many things mm -hmm. through the these uh, Bible studies and things, and uh, it's something you know. You just have to keep. You can't take it too lightly. Right. Know? Yeah, so you can't fall into complacency, which can be really easy to do. And that's kind of the uh, fine line of, of repetition and uh, consistency being extremely healthy for people. And complacency on falling off on kind of turning off our minds and our receptiveness to something because we, we receive it so often. And that's a fine line because repetition, going, constantly being reminded, constantly being in the Word, it is healthy. But like anything, we can abuse kind of the way we go about it and follow the complacency and all those things. Uh, so number 19, as you review this section of Romans, focus on the mission of the church, a mission that informs Paul's words throughout the letter, and a mission that continues today. Think specifically about your personal mission as a Christian servant and the mission of your own congregation. From the letter, glean several truths to guide the church in mission. Indicate the verse from uh, Romans 15, 14 through 16, 27, where you found the truth, and share your truths with your group, then take them and put them to work as a missionary like Paul in your own right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Just do it. Just like it. I think the most important thing is to stay focused on the word. Don't get caught up in all the other stuff. Right. A singular focus on what it is that you are doing. Proclaiming Christ and living as a witness to Christ. Anyone have anything else? I think for me, verse 32 is pretty strong. It talks about, you know, it's through God's will that I can come together be a part of it, be refreshed. Mm. Yeah. It isn't just to be there among people. It's very specific. 
for the purpose of getting together. Right. God uh, proposes to put us together with other people and to be mutually refreshed by their mm -hmm. company. Not just socialization. Right. I mean, it's important. But the whole purpose of that is to gain strength. Yes. Yeah. And, and many of us know what it's like where people can just steal the strength right out of you. Mm -hmm. And leave you feeling just zapped. Yeah, absolutely. So we have to come back and get that. Mark, did you have something? Okay. Anything else? <laughs> we made it through Romans. Thank you very, very much. Yes, right. Thank you. Yeah, you, what, six out of the nine or something? <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it, I think that's a little... <laughs> we, we had... Uh, uh, him going to, to England to see Jesse, and we also had uh, adult confirmation Thursday nights, and he didn't want to split between Wednesday and Thursday. He wanted whoever was teaching Wednesday to teach Thursday, so uh, that just made sense. But the adult confirmation schedule and people's availabilities, that's just kind of how it worked out. Um, I've really enjoyed it because I really like Lifelight. I think it's really cool, awesome. I've really enjoyed it since I, I, we've been, since we retired, and it just, it's, Sunday morning is fine, and I, I mean, sometimes it's more more lecture, less discussion. Yes, you really... Yeah. And, and we have to do the research the week yeah. before to the, well, what else is this tied to, so... It, it is a nice compliment and, uh, to Sunday morning Bible class, and the same thing for Sunday morning Bible class. It's nice to have those two right. uh, things. I really appreciate all your... Uh, attendance and participation. It's been fun going through this with you all. Have you heard from Pastor? Not, I think he was in Ireland uh, yesterday or the day before. He said it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, and then he got to uh, have a, like a, a, one of those gloves on and, and have a Harris Hawk uh, oh. Oh, land, land on him yeah. and do those kinds of things. It was really that was cool to see. He sent Pastor and I a video. That was really cool. He's having a good time. They're, they're enjoying it. And hopefully their visit with the young people has been fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Got to be the best part yeah. to do. I know that, I think he said Cambridge, seeing Cambridge was scrapped from the trip because he got an extra day at Detroit Airport. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that's too bad. So, yeah. that's too bad. They didn't get to see everything, but they're still getting to see a lot. He's, I, as far as I know, having a really great time. So. Well, God's plan for them to be there was just different. That's right. That's right. All right, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together and bringing us uh, through to the conclusion of Paul's letter to the Romans. Uh, God, we thank you for the witness uh, that Paul and all the apostles were uh, to your son Jesus Christ and for their words of uh, knowledge, encouragement, and faith uh, that they have given to us so that we might believe. God, I also ask that you would give each and every one of us uh, a mind like Paul's, which is a mind like your son Jesus Christ, to have that singular focus on uh, you, your glory, and what you have done for us and what you are doing even today uh, in this world in bringing restoration and life uh, to all nations. Uh, help us to go about our vocations uh, with that mind of Christ uh, so that everyone that we encounter sees, uh, sees us as living witnesses to your Son. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. All right. Find us and I'll take our stuff out of it. it sounds like Mark needs to go to Panera after church to do anyone else's interest.